Greetings, friends. In my last recorded teaching message, I spoke of the conscious dying process as I'm living it. And once again, let me reiterate, well, I absolutely know that my body will die as it's simply a fact of life we all understand. I am not at this moment concerned with that in myself, not the physical death. I actually have no real fear of physical death, but that's not the point. How it may happen could be quite unpleasant and very, very challenging. That's still going to be within the framework of my life and being the way forward. But the conscious dying process, which might be lived for weeks or months in a physical dying process, is actually a process that happens throughout life. Jesus taught that those who saved, those, those who seek to save their lives will lose it. And, and he's speaking in the psychological sense. He, the, in the opening to the gospel, according to Thomas, he's attributed to saying that those who taste, those who hear his words shall not taste death. And again, what he's talking about is not the physical death, though the myth about him is that he was resurrected physically in, in that sense now, Potentially, and people imagine that can happen to them. That is, that is not really, I think, I, I know, not essential to what Jesus' teaching was. He was basically saying there's a level of consciousness that's not in the, the subject-object manifold. It's not in time. And in my one of my earlier teaching videos, I talked about the fundamental mistake of reaching a certain point in time when you have the me, you, subject, object, consciousness, and you're living in time, at least your body is, and the world is, and you then get confused, we all do, that you are not the subject to consciousness, you are not the awareness of your experience, you are actually the center of your experience, the source Everything is happening about you, to you, from them to you, from you to them. And you're, you're lost in the past and the future and your beliefs about everyone and everything else. And that, again, is a psychological construction. If that does not die, you will spend your whole life in one degree or another of suffering. But it doesn't have to die all at once as it did for me when I was 30. And in my previous talk, I talked about Part of it, there, there's, a, there's an awakening into something that is always present. And then there's the need throughout life to make decisions and choices and operate and function in the world of necessity. People become identified with what they do in the world of a sense necessity. And the more they work to do it and the more they're rewarded for it, the more it becomes the very thing that will hinder their ability to surrender into the conscious dying process. There are so many levels of the conscious. You, you have to decide, are you in a relationship that's transactional or just comfortable? Or are you in a relationship that's evolutionary? Do you, are you attempting to keep a covenant with love itself in your relationship with another? Well, then every time you see some way in which your mind is dividing you, relative to that other and dividing you from the other and the world in which you live, then you have to consciously die to the behavior that is dividing you. And that conscious dying eventually, eventually reaches a point where you're going to have a confrontation with your fear of non-existence. That's what the ego fears. Now, the simple truth is the ego's fear of non-existence is just the ego's fear. This physical form ends. Personal consciousness, as far as I know and have read, 
it ends. So while you're alive, it's important to be the champion of the values. So if you're in business, then the champion of the values of consciously doing business in the most respectful way, win-win way possible. If you're a parent learning more and more about the quality of your attention with your children, are you operating from fear? Can you make the distinction between knowing your child is completely an otherness, seeing him or her as a mystery, and at the same time having to say, turn off your smartphone or your screen, you've been on it too long today. If you talk to the child as if you're an object doing something wrong, when you are not consciously in the presence of the oneness of yourself and the knowledge that that child, even though they too are now operating from the mistake of believing that they are a separate self, because you have, how else would they learn it? But you don't have to operate in yourself as a separate self. And you don't have to operate with your children as a separate self. And you don't have to operate in, in your relationships as a separate self. And every relationship that causes you to be divided is inviting you to conscious dying. And the relationships that cause us to be divided in ourselves are ones that are usually the closest to us, especially the ones we evolved into our me consciousness, our mothers you know, and fathers and family. And then we do this dance of pretending that these are the most important and closest people to us, which in one sense they are, but in another sense, they may have no sense whatsoever of being obedient to, to, to a deeper truth about life. But as Jesus say, all those who listen to and obey the will of my father are my family. What he's simply saying is, if you have an alignment with what is not born and what is not, does not die, then you have, you have a, a process inside of yourself that's seeking to know that directly, and you're surrendering everything inside of yourself that you can understand or a good teacher can point you to understand is an obstacle to that. Everyone who's attended my retreats has been involved, invited to consciously die into exercises some are comfortable with, some are very uncomfortable with. But the process is, as you get to the edge where you're, it's doing you, you're not doing it, you're doing it, but it, that's the process. That's the taste of awakening to something much larger. And I play with that in so many different ways. At this point in my life, as I said in the previous video, it's not about the nobility of a warrior that fights for a good cause. If that warrior survives and comes home and is stained by what they lived, then there's the opportunity for them to let go of their history, let go of their past, let go of the wound. Common psychology says, oh, you, you know, it's very hard to let go of the wound, but then there is the, you know, the possibility of, of um, I'm forgetting the terminology, but the opportunity that comes from those kinds of injuries, those kinds of traumas to outgrow the traumas. But that's a conscious dying process. In alcohol, we do the same, th alcoholism, an organization like AA does the same thing. It asks you to turn to and put your life into the hands and your faith in, into the hands of a higher power. And know that that higher power has always held you and supports you. And if you can align yourself with the higher power, however you conceive that to yourself, however you, then you know that continuing down the path of drinking alcohol to escape feeling and sensation and pain, and then cycling around and around in that addiction, that's not what a higher power invites you to. The higher power invites you to be here now as the all that it is you are. And so everywhere you look, you see. 
the deepest teachings, the paths that work, the processes that heal, ask you to release some level of identification, some pattern of looping between your mind and your behavior, your mind and your emotions behavior, your mind and emotions and behavior, around and around. Let them fall. Let the mistake of believing you are a separate self relax because you are going to die. And while it's absolutely appropriate to tramp, champion purposeful living aligned with good values, moving towards some sense of truth with a capital T. The only way you actually get there is if you are dismembered by realization or have sought with such precision that there's not much left inside of you fighting against the moment where you disappear. And what the ego is terrified of doesn't exist because you are the fullness and allness, it's the beginning and the end, and that is what has always hold, held you what you are in the depths of yourself. As we get older, letting go, letting go of volition, will, willpower, my doing, doing it this way, making it happen this way, fighting against this, choosing that. Taking political sides, you gotta be out of your mind. There are values that are important that we would love to see the political movement foster. But the identity of being this or that in opposition to each other, that's what's killing democracy. All the politicians die too. There's some evidence when they know they're dying, they become a little more authentic. They make a little bit different choices in the final stages of their lives as political people. I think of Senator McCain in the last months of his life and what he choose to, chose to stand for even more emphatically than he had before. I could go in any direction with what I'm sharing with you. And to reiterate, not knowing when I'm going to send out or we're going to send out this video, my own conscious dying process means I'm not going to be offering my work in Europe this year, this, you know, beyond 2022. And please take advantage of the form that evolved over these 40, almost 45 years and join me. And join me with my wife because that's part of the evolution of my unfoldment and the transmission of the beginningless, endless consciousness. There ain't no better game in town, Kathy likes to say. It's of course not a game, but it's the playfulness of how she says it. And that's what's in my heart about it all. I understand how challenging life is. <laughs>